There's one thing I've said again and again on this channel, and that is that you ought to evaluate things. You ought to look at the bigger picture. That also implies you need to examine things and also you need to challenge things when you notice that they don't add up. Now, challenging something doesn't have to imply that you go into the full attack and ask one, what the heck are you doing, huh? No, you don't have to do it like that. But you should challenge something when you notice it doesn't add up. Don't you realize that most predators get away because people don't challenge them? And again, challenging someone isn't looking for a fight, isn't um, a going into offensive. For example, if someone says something negative about someone else, for example, you have Joe saying, oh, that Frank, I really can't stand the guy, think he's everything. Then you can say something like, oh, he thinks he's everything? What everything of what? Okay? What, have you just, what did you just do now? The other guy had an accusation against some other guy. Now, the guy with the accusation, you challenge him, you ask him, literally you're just telling him, okay, so you claim, you accuse him of thinking he's everything, everything of what? So you're asking that guy to give an account of that negative will of his. When you do this, he will realize, hold on a minute, I can't do this. I can't have a negative will over here. Understand the following, the earth is the Lord's. All right? He's the Lord of the earth. And his will ought to be done on earth as is in heaven. In heaven, there's perfect, absolute safety for everyone. Because Satan and all, this, all those uh, sodomites are thrown out. But his will ought, will tr be transferred onto the earth also. And that means that all the inhabitants of the earth, me, you, everyone around, has to comply with Christ, who is Lord of the earth. And as Lord of the earth, he wants absolute safety on the earth also. That means every will of every human being must be in line with him so that there is safety for everyone. Human beings have the needs to be safe, need to be secure, and they need to be relevant. Now those needs are designed into you by Christ himself. So all human wills must be in line with Christ so that everyone is safe, everyone is secure, and everyone is important. Everyone matters. Anytime anyone has a will that violates those three basic human needs, someone is in accusation. And what did I tell you before? Accusation is what goes before assassination. Okay? So, that being said, nobody has any right anywhere to have a negative will against anyone, anywhere on the earth. Okay, so anyone that teaches you that you have the right to have a negative will against someone else because you have your reasons, blah, 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 they're deceiving you. Okay? And why am I talking about this? Too often when people suggest negativity, we don't challenge them. Again, you don't challenge them by going off in the negative against them because that would be repaying evil with evil. Then you get this fight and then you have a cycle of violence. No. You can remain at peace with a smile and challenge people. That's very effective. And you should do that. You should challenge people that claim they have the right to be negative. If you don't, you're enabling them in the negative and you're enabling danger on the human community. I say it as it is. Me? I call people out on stuff. I do. I've been doing that since I was a kid. Even adults used to act out of line and I as a kid felt uncomfortable. I would make remarks to let everyone know that I'm uncomfortable. Yes, I was just a kid, but I, but I sense already when something doesn't add up, something doesn't add up. And when I reflect back, it's that so-called big mouth I had from time to time that prevented worse from coming to me. Because people knew Rashid talks. He talks too much. Well, I rather talk too much. When something doesn't add up, you should speak about it. You shouldn't be respectful by just bending over to someone's negative will. You shouldn't. What did I tell you before? Christ is Lord. That means nobody has any right to any negative agreement anywhere. 
There's no such thing as privacy, their life, their will, their decisions, our decisions find a way to take it. No! He is Lord, and I agree with him. So don't come with negative wills to me because I challenge you. I put you in your place, you're not God, and if you want to go off, you're on a judgment. Period. You're dealt with. I mean it. That's how I roll. That's how I do. Me? I challenge negativity in a Christ-centered way. You have the world's way of challenging negativity, which will draw you in the negative, but I challenge it in Christ's way. That's what turning your other cheek means. That's what going the extra mile means. That you challenge evil in such a way that evil exposes itself and, and destroys itself. <laughs> really, we should challenge things that don't add up. And before we challenge things that don't add up, we ought to renew our minds so that our minds add up. Too many people can't challenge things they ought to challenge because their mind, them, their mind itself needs to be challenged. Well, I may do some videos exposing known predators. Well, known predators. There are people out there with influence. And the reason I'm focusing on them is because they're the ones impacting the lives of many. The more someone has influence, that individual has to be checked. If you have a mayor of Rotterdam, let's say the mayor of Rotterdam goes out there and he knocks someone out because he's frustrated. And let's say there's a guy there, he's a drunkard, he goes to the bar every weekend and he knocks someone out. What do you think is going to happen? People are going to be more upset with the mayor. Why? He's the mayor of Rotterdam. He has a political role and he has influence on the lives of almost 600,000 people. So when he does something out of line, people are going to notice it more, and that will have a bigger effect than when some drunkard who drinks too much knocks him out while he's drunk. And the judge will give the mayor a higher sentence than the guy at the pub. Why? Because the guy at the pub, he's known to be aggressive, and most likely it's another drunkard that he knocked out. But the mayor of Rotterdam doing something out of line like that, oh dear, he's in big trouble. No, people not going to, in the world are not really going to forgive him for doing that. Because people would say, you have a public function. You are a public figure. You have impact on other people's lives. You affect other people. If you, the mayor of Rotterdam, knock someone out just because you, were, you are frustrated, well, what is this going to do to the youth? So people out there may, will copy your behavior and say, well, if the mayor of Rotterdam knocks someone out when, uh, when, when he's frustrated, so why can't I? You get what I'm saying here? If you have a public function in the world, they keep you in check. Now, that's how the world functions. This world that's Antichrist, at least they know that people with a public function, you ought to keep them in check then why is it that Babylon churches teach, teach us to just forget about the past, just to let things go, allow people to have the reason, let them go their path? Why are we called to enable predators, to enable psychopaths, and to enable abusers? Why aren't we taught to challenge them? Don't we have the power of Christ? <laughs> Look, if you have a metal, if a blacksmith is working on a piece of metal and the metal is in the heat, what the blacksmith can do is he can pick some salt, throw it in it, and the salt will cause an intense, in, will intensify the flames. And when the flame, flames intensify, all the impurities become visible. And then the blacksmith can just pick all the impurities out of it. So the salt in, is intended to reveal what's going on, to reveal the roots of issues. Aren't believers called the salt of the earth? Then why aren't we functioning as the salt of the earth? Look, you have counterfeit solutions that are offered to the world, which are short-lived. Think of Black Lives Matter, for example. What did that accomplish? Well, it accomplished more harm than good. But, People fell for it because at least a concern was addressed. The believers are the ones who ought to address the concerns of the world. 
so that people in the world will see that they need Christ. What I see happening now is that believers leave the world alone. They are in a bargain with the world so the world won't attack them. What? Uh, that's, how, how, that's not how it ought to be. Well, I don't want to make this video too long. Just challenge things in a Christ-centered manner where you notice they don't add up. Do it. Be at peace. Thank <laughs> you.